Welcome to What's Treading with Tire Review, presented by Apex 2022. I'm Maddie Weiner, and today on the podcast, we're joined by Bill Nayara, Director of Sustainable Materials and Circular Economy for Bridgestone America's Technology Center. Bill has been responsible for the startup of a new research organization and facilities for Bridgestone to investigate an alternative renewable domestic source of natural rubber for the tire industry. And that's just a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. So, Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to join you. Thank you so much. Um, so, so, Bill, Bridgestone, I know um, just from reading uh, about the company, you know, the company has huge sustainability goals. So tell us about the start of this new research organization that's investigating an alternative renewable domestic source of natural rubber. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. It's, a crop called, it's, a, it's a crop called Waiuli. Um, okay. But I, I think you hit on all, all, the, all the benefits. Uh, actually, not so new. Uh, this is work that uh, we started sort of in the, in the R&D domain almost 10 years ago. Uh, we built two greenfield facilities in Arizona, one for, focused on agriculture and one focused on the industrial processing of the biomass that, uh, that results from that agricultural work. Uh, what is new is that the uh, third quarter of last year, we announced that we're, we're, we're accelerating that work. We've reached a point where the R&D has been confident, aspiring to the point that we've announced this as an exploratory business, which means that we are really building out the team and the business models about how we how we commercialize this and go to market. Very interesting. That's that's awesome. So uh, obviously, sustainability is such an important thing, um, such a hot uh, uh, topic for tire manufacturers right now. So from your perspective, why is it important for tire manufacturers like Bridgestone to invest in, in these technologies and finding alternative, you know, domestic sources of natural rubber? Well, I, th I think that this, 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 this is certainly sustainability. It's not sustainability in the, in the sense that we often think of sustainable materials in the, in the tire sector, you know, replacing petrochemicals with, uh, you know, other, other sources of carbon, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, you know, certainly, you know, sustainability through, through a different lens. Uh, or multiple lenses. So natural rubber is a natural product. It's renewable, it's sustainable, it's bio-based. Um, but certainly our supply chain for them, and, it, and it's also the most important material for, for tire manufacturing. It's in every tire. You could consider it a safety component. It's in every belt package and it's critical to the performance of especially highly loaded tires, right? right. So, um, so, you know, it's critical for our industry. And, you know, if you look at the way that, that natural rubber is, is sourced today, mm -hmm. uh, it, and if we look at it, especially from a North American viewpoint, there's a lot of non-ideality uh, in that supply chain. Uh, I often say that we're single sourced. Uh, we're single sourced from a single plant species that's grown as a clonal monoculture and susceptible to disease. And we're single sourced from a single region of the globe. Mm -hmm. So so the biological concentration is, you know, is a challenge because of 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 essentially disease. And that's why a, you know, a, a species of plant called Hevea brasiliensis doesn't really grow in Latin America in 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 commercial production. It's because the essentially the parasites for the crop exist there as well. So it exists in Southeast Asia just simply because of physical separation to mm -hmm. separate those two things. Uh, and, you know, as you have increased in, in international air travel, uh, you know, parasites move much more easily. And if it just takes a Google search to see that, that this is a topical concern right now in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so the crop like that grown as a clonal, clonal monoculture is, is susceptible to disease. Um, from the geography concentration standpoint that it were in a single part of the world, uh, you know, as you think about climate change and the impacts on crops and crop productivity, uh, from, a, from a business lens, if you think about a crop that is, is, is the cost of production is very highly dependent on, on, on labor costs and you look at a region that's developing, uh, you know, it, it brings challenges. Um, and if you look at the, you know, the supply chain, it's, you know, half, half the world 
And I don't think we need to talk about semiconductors or other things right now, but we know that this is, you know, this is really an issue that, that, that faces, well, basically everybody, if you want a semiconductor or a garage door, it's a problem. Right. Um, and so, um, you know, this is, you know, sustainability more means more than just, you know, just, just replacing materials. It means it's being able to do that without, w- without causing additional grief. Right. So yeah. although we're, it's a, it's a bio-based product, uh, we see the opportunity to really diversify. And as we look from a North American perspective, you know, mm-hmm. Shortening that supply chain certainly helps in things like CO2 emissions and life cycle analysis of the product. Right. Uh, we talked about the, you know, the, the length of the supply chain. Um, and then if you think about from the domestic aspect of it, maybe from a national security perspective, you mm-hmm. know, you know, the rubber source from region of the world is not entirely the most stable place in, 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 in the world. So, right. you know, diversification uh, makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, for sure. And I just wanted to back up. I had a couple follow-up questions for you. Can you describe um, what the Guayuli plant is for you know the listeners and and um, people watching this that that don't know? So it's a it's a perennial shrub mm-hmm. that 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 grows in arid climates. It's native to West Texas and the Chihuahuan Desert in Mexico. If you think sort of stereotypical. Um, uh, tumbleweed, you're yeah. pretty close, but not really. I mean, it's not uh, essentially a, a, a pretty crop, but it's great. It's grown as a row crop. It's a low water user. Uh, it metabolizes rubber in a layer of cells in the bark bark layer as a stress response to cold. Um, okay. And unlike Havea, that rubber gets produced inside the cells of the bark layer. Mm-hmm. And practically what that means is that you can't tap you, well, you, you can't tap a shrub, but uh, even if you could, the, the rubber is contained inside the inside the cell, which means that we have to harvest the biomass, uh, process it through an industrial process to ex- extract that rubber and co-products. So we call that a biorefinery. So we take in Waiuli biomass, we extract rubber, we extract a terpenes-based resin. These are produced as distinct product streams. We're left with the woody part of the plant called bagasse. Um, and you know, really, the business case is built on on really developing markets and revenue streams from from all of those products. So, just like a petrochemical refinery, a biorefinery needs to really develop that whole whole ecosystem. Yeah, for sure. And and like you said at the top of the episode, um, you know, Bridgestone uh, has has been studying it in, in the Southeast U.S. Um, for for quite some time. I think you said ten years. Is that right? Almost ten years. Almost ten years. Okay. Awesome. Well, very cool. Very interesting. And I know there's a lot um, going on uh, with that. So that, that's awesome. A, a, a related part um, that I wanted to talk to you about today, too, was, um, you know, as, as Bridgestone uh, has a strategy to create a circular economy, the company's also partnered with a company called Lanza Tech, which, um, as I saw, was a carbon capture and transformation company. Um, and this partnership is to pursue end of life tire recycling technologies. So I'm curious, can you describe how this partnership and how the two companies, uh, you know, Bridgestone and Lanzatech, will be working together on end of life tire recycling? Right. So I mean, this is this is a coupling of of you know two sort of non traditional players in a space that's sort of non traditional. You know, depending which side of the mirror you're looking from. Um, but, you know, you know, so the concept is, is, you know, as a scientist, you know, end of life tires are essentially, I mean, there's a lot of effort that's been forth, put forth to put, you know, really good carbon in, in one place in a very dense way. So let's look at it, an opportunity to do something with it. And let's look to our industry and in, 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 in ways of, of, of taking that carbon and bringing it back uh, into, into new tires and bringing it back in a way that doesn't compromise tire performance. So, I mean, there's a lot of recycling technologies, um, that, you know, do, you know, do something to tire, transform the tire, whether it's recovered carbon black or, or, uh, or, um, you know, various flavors of devulcanization or micronization Mm -hmm. of, 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 of tires. And these are all good. And these all have a home in, 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 in tire product, but 
the fact of the matter is in, in all of those cases, they're not producing materials that look like virgin materials that we look use today. So, okay. you know, you know, even if these things performed at an absolutely technically per perfect level, the, the output product would be the average of the tires that you put in, in terms of material, not, you know, any of the specific grades that we use and, and, you know, and what's a very highly engineered product. So, so, yeah. all, you know, like even if you recovered all the carbon black, you'd have a mixture of carbon blacks that would very accurately represent the tire or a, you know, a, a population of tires as a whole, but wouldn't represent any individual component of a tire well. So, okay. you know, with that, it brings, you know, some use limitation. So right. I'm, I'm not, you know, we're active in these areas. They're important. They have they have roles, but really to, to maintain and continue to advance tire performance, we do really need technically specified virgin raw materials, just like we have today, uh, but hopefully getting our carbon from different, uh, you know, from a different source. So really it's addressing that virgin like material mm -hmm. that, that, is, that, that is pure defined and, uh, and advanceable that really we're, we're, we're targeting with work like this. Uh, we're doing with tires to enable the the, the circular economy for right. for it. and you know the technology is you know quite clear so what, what do you need to do this is is you, you take tires and we're going to and, and we deconstruct them through gasification to to sort of fundamental fundamental building block molecules carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and and and, and hydrogen so C, c1 molecules uh -huh. And that allows us the the ability then to build the the, the molecule that we want. Oh, um, okay. So, and in this case, we're using Lanzatex technology, where which is unique. It's a gas fermentation technology where we take that 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 gas mm -hmm. and feed it to a microbe, a bacteria that actually originated from the gut of a rabbit, and and uh, Lanzatex been working with with for, for for a number of years so interesting that 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 organism consumes uh -huh. carbon in the form of co and co2 it needs it consumes hydrogen as well okay. and through its metabolism it produces ethanol it can be tailored to produce other other chemicals um uh, you know as as well you know with 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 you know within practical lim lim limitations and many of these you know we see as ideal uh, intermediate molecules for making things like, you know, like butadiene, which is a building block for synthetic rubber. So exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, you know, that's the long story. There's probably an intermediate story where, where we're solving the end of life tire problem and adding, adding value through products like ethanol for, 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 in, you know, industrial and transportation markets, and then uh, bolting on the, the, the butadiene piece, piece later. But, uh, you know, really that is, you know, that is the goal yeah. in that we're making a butadiene molecule, which is, which is pure. It can be fed to existing infrastructure and we can make, you know, the exact same technically specified synthetic rubbers that we do today. Uh, only we're doing it from carbon that was recycled from tires um, rather than pumping more oil out of the ground. Right. So truly making it a circular economy right. and, and you're saying making products from the tires that can actually that fit the specifications to go into another, you know, making another set of tires or, you know, I guess uh, back into the tire manufacturing process. Is that correct? Right. right. OK. And, and what I and what I maybe neglected to answer in your original question is, you know, why why these two companies. So Lanzatech brings this unique technology. Bridgestone has, has a very unique place in the market as, uh, as you know, one of the largest players in the Americas and doing so with, you know, a, a retail arm that, that has, you know, this, that is fully Bridgestone owned you know, over 2,200 points of sale that, you know, can provide at least the start of a feeder system for, for tires. Realistically, this is going to happen more in a more localized manner, but, you know, I think through, through, through our retail presence, through our relationships with, uh, with, with, with customers, uh, you know, we have a good way of, you know, really achieving at industrial scale, what needs to be done to, uh, to realize this. 
Well, Bill, I, I so appreciate your time today. I learned a lot about, um, you know, just Bridgestone s sustainability programs and goals. And um, I know our, our audience will be definitely interested in this sustainability, like I said, is a huge topic. So thank you for your time today. And uh, we really appreciate you being on the podcast. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Have a great, have a great afternoon. All right. Thanks. You too.